Oh, hey everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I don't know why, but I'm filming this in a sports bra because you know, what are clothes? I don't know. I'm just like going into all the things that I wish I had discovered earlier in life because I think they really would have helped me. You know, they say that when you're starting a YouTube channel, you should like write out 150 things that, uh, that you feel confident you can make a video about. And I did that. I did do that. But for some reason, whenever I make a list, I just don't want to follow the list. Um, so new ideas are coming into my head. And I also probably like should have created more content before like launching uh, so that I didn't feel such a scramble to produce. I don't know. There's no right way to do things. This seems fine. It's good. It's all good. I'm gonna make sure I, I keep some hair back. Otherwise it just looks like I'm naked. What am I doing? What I want to talk about today is um, a book. I know, I know, I know. Who reads books anymore? I read books. Do I read books? I listen to audiobooks, but I do occasionally read a book. And um, this is like a really simple little book. Uh, it's called Mindset. And when I read this book, I don't even know how I found this. I don't know. It's on a lot of people's bestsellers. Like it's on a lot of people's lists. And um, I could not stop talking about it. I could not stop thinking about it because it pinpointed something so precisely that I experienced and that like, that stopped me in life that I just wanted everyone to know about it. And when I presented the, the premise of the book to people, they seemed like, like, all right, nonchalant about it. And I didn't under like, I didn't understand how it wasn't as life-changing to them as it was to me. But th that's, th I could say I have that response to a lot of things. When I like something, I really like something and I don't understand why other people don't like it. Anyway, so for those of you don't, who don't know, Mindset by Carol S. Dweck, PhD, is it's really simple and like this book is, um, there's like a bunch of notes, but it's about 250 pages. And honestly, you don't even need to read that much because she presents her argument. And then I guess this is what all books do, all nonfiction books, maybe all fiction books. She presents her argument and then she just like hammers it in how it's true um, with all different kinds of situations like parenting, Business, school, relationships. Yeah. Um, two million copies in print. Two million, I'm surprised it's not more. I'm surprised it's not more, it should be more. So basically, I know you're like, okay, 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 go, 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 what is it? She postulates that uh, there are two kinds of mindsets in the world, there is fixed mindset and growth mindset. Now, fixed mindset means that you think something is rigid. So it can be about anything, but you think that something is the way it is and cannot alter from that state. And a growth mindset is that everything is constantly growing and has the capacity for growth. And she's talking specifically about human beings and anything that human beings might want to be able to do. Uh, so the, the most, the thing that she really like stays on the most, I guess like is intelligence and is, uh, is about learning. So she really goes into depth about how um, IQ scores <laughs> are like uh, being seen as intelligent can kind of mess with you, um, probably in the moment and then especially later on in life. So people with a fixed mindset about their own intelligence or 
you know, rather than going into intelligence, it can also just be like uh, how good they are at school. Cause I, I do see those things as being very different. So if you have a fixed mindset about intelligence and you're told all your life, you're smart, you're smart, you're smart. You think smart is like a fixed quantity that you just are smart and it's there whether you work on it or not, whether you do your homework or not, whether you read or not, you are smart. And you would think that th that's a good thing. However, um, it's something that you're constantly protecting because now you have this identity of being smart. And with that identity comes an idea that like you don't have to work for it because you just are it. And actually working for it might make it look like you're not smart. That's when I think of that, 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 that just, that's me. That's me. That's me. I'm always terrified to actually work towards something because I feel like the working towards it is proving that I'm bad at it. And so I'm constantly trying to cover up the effort that I put into things. I do put in a lot of effort, but I hide my tracks because I'm worried how it will make me look. And I think I really prize like natural ability, like natural beauty, natural intelligence, natural talent, natural charisma, anything that just feels like it's like, oh God, shone a light and was like, you, you're special. That's what I want to go for. And that's like what I, I mean, there's something so unblemished about it, but this actually says, that it puts you in a very, oh, I need to like silence my phone when I do these videos. Dad, dad's calling me. He knows I'm, I'm talking about him indirectly. Okay, so you have like this kind of fixed mindset that says I am a certain way and I need to protect that at all costs. As opposed to growth mindset, which is that anything can be grown. So sure, maybe you have, maybe you're naturally intelligent, but you're not really interested in, oh, the light is changing. Oh, it's getting sunny in here. Okay, growth mindset where you have whatever you have naturally, but you're not really interested in that. What you're interested in is what you can grow, what you can learn, what your efforts can yield what hard work can yield. And that's really what you prize. You're not so interested in what you are. You're interested in what you do, what you do with what you have. And that's really where you take your own sense of self-esteem. And that's like really what lights you up. Long-term, that kind of mindset is hugely beneficial because it means, I don't know why I always cough on these videos. I swear to God, I don't have the virus. Okay, so that kind of mindset is hugely beneficial because it basically means that no matter what presents itself to you in life, no matter like what you're given, you're just not really interested in that. You're interested in what you do with it. And so again, she talks a lot about intelligence, a lot about school, um, children who, who are more interested in learning more interested in in what their like work ethic can do uh, they in the long run do much better in school than children who are just naturally intelligent or talented and and it goes on in life uh, in work and in work where um, you know like people have a greater capacity to like really succeed in life with a growth mindset, as opposed to you kind of end up with a narcissistic personality with a fixed mindset about your own genius or talent, because you're always trying to protect that. And because you're not allowed to really like work towards bettering yourself, you have to cheat a lot and you have to take credit for a lot of things that you didn't do. So it, it actually also morally bankrupts you. And again, so she talks a lot about intelligence. I would say, what I find like fascinating about this book is I continue to go back to it. Not like reading. I, I read it once and I was good. 
I think. Um, I continue to go back to it thinking like, oh, is this fixed mindset about absolutely anything that presents itself to me? And I really, like, I, there, I don't know if there's anything that this doesn't apply to. Basically what this reveals is that everything is growable. For me, um, I had a very fixed mindset about my body. Uh, this is really whatever. I remember the day that I realized that I could, I could grow my butt. <laughs> like I could work out my butt and it would change its shape. I really just thought that because I was skinny, I was kind of doomed to have a flat butt for the rest of my life. And then I started working out and I remember noticing like, oh shit, there's starting to be some shape there. And that sounds so basic, but I, I just didn't know that was possible. I really think like the secret to this too is breaking it down into smaller pieces and looking at like what is required for this, this kind of like broader um, idea. So intelligence, I would be like, what is intelligence? And you could think of it's logic. You could think of it's like uh, just the amount of data points that you know, the more well-read you are, uh, the better you speak. Um, what else would it be? I don't know, math skills, I don't know. So you could break it down and you can see that like all of those things can be like rehearsed, practiced, thinking of it in terms of like what we do at a gym and there's a muscle. It more, what I would say with this book is that like everything is a muscle, is like just a potential and you can develop it. I also think that applies for like relationships uh, people think that they just like are a certain way in relationship to other people. They think that they are a certain way in terms of their personality, in terms of like their ability for compassion or their ability for love or their ability for kindness or their ability for extroversion. I really, um, I grew up being told that I was shy and introverted and I really, don't like this idea because in the West, it's a very bad thing to be introverted or it, it's becoming more and more acceptable um, or like uh, valued on its own merits. But, but yeah, people tend to want to flock to extroverts and I want to be the thing that people are flocking to. I, I didn't see that like shyness is just like a series of behaviors uh, that tend to like uh, pull me into myself, tend to like make me quieter, tend to make me like not spend time with people. And those are things that I can develop. Like literally it's just about maybe raising the volume of my voice, maybe just like hanging out with people more often, maybe just um, uh, thinking less, like even with meditation, you can develop your brain so that it works better, so that it works for you and not against you. So there's like, there's maybe an infinite number of things that you can develop a growth mindset for. And that's the other thing too. It's like really the first step is like developing a growth mindset, um, having a growth mindset about having a growth mindset. You can read this book and be kind of like, well, great, I'm fixed. I'm like, I guess that's just the way I am. But the more that you pay attention to um, how something actually is and how it could be grown, the more like you see the ability for growth mindset in yourself. And then that starts to take hold in all different areas. I I just think this book is amazing. If you don't even want to read the, th the whole thing, because she goes into like, just hammering down like every example of how growth mindset is is better. Um, honestly, like you could just read the first 50 pages probably and be like, okay, I got it. I, I trust, I trust there's like uh, stories to back this up and I'm just gonna go do it now.
Um, the other thing that I find really interesting is she like really talks about teachers and parents and how they should develop a growth mindset in young people right from the start. And the way to do that, I'm really bad at this. Uh, I could work on it. I can have growth mindset about it. Um, so with children, it's actually much better to give them praise for things they do, for things they work towards, for like qualities they show that display grit and perseverance, as opposed to just saying like a blanket statement, like, aren't you a genius? Aren't you pretty? Aren't you whatever? It's something that, yeah, you wanna be like praising them for their efforts and for what they do consciously and deliberately. Uh, because those are things ultimately that ultimately, those are things that are ultimately in their control. And so, yeah, you want to give people like as much agency as possible, especially young people. You really want to instill in them the, not just like the belief, because it's, it's not even like about, uh, about faith. It's like the actual truth that they with their efforts can make progress in anything they want to have or be. Uh, so please read that book. If you've already read it, write your comments below. Please hit like, subscribe, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Okay, I'm gonna call my dad. Am I gonna call my dad? I'm gonna call my dad, okay. <laughs> Bye.